So after years of delays, the federal government is banning Chinese telecom giant Huawei. The U.S. has been calling on Canada to, to do so since at least 2019. China says Canada is using, quote, trumped up security risks as an excuse to exclude relevant Chinese companies from the Canadian market. And it's promising to take all necessary steps to protect Chinese companies' rights and interests. Guy Saint-Jacques previously served as Canadian ambassador to China. He's in Montreal. Well, Guy Saint-Jacques, we, we've got reaction now from the Chinese government, and you won't be surprised to learn they're not happy about the Huawei ban. What should Canada and the Canadian government be bracing for in retaliation? Well, I think that uh, we, we have been warned. Uh, uh, the Chinese ambassador uh, in Ottawa, Tsongpi, who, uh, as well as, as his uh, predecessor, uh, Lu Xia, yeah, I think in the case of Lu, it was about two years ago, uh, they warned us that if uh, Huawei would be banned, uh, from Canada 5G uh, development, that there would be uh, measures that they would take. So I expect that uh, uh, they will take measures. They must be busy now looking at what they import from Canada. And the other reason why I expect a reaction is that this is a, a key year for uh, Xi Jinping. Uh, he wants to uh, have a third mandate as Secretary General of the uh, Communist Party of China. The decision will be made uh, in the fall. Uh, things are not going very well. The economy has slowed down be because of the way that they manage COVID with this zero uh, COVID. Also, uh, he has been criticized inside the party for his uh, support of uh, Russia. And so I think Canada is an easy target uh, for them. They will want to uh, punish us, to show to other countries that if you dare to oppose China, that uh, you will uh, suffer consequences. But at the same time, there are room to maneuver in terms of what they could select to punish us is, has been uh, reduced uh, in as much as uh, they need Canada to, uh, to get the, the barley, uh, the corn, the, the wheat uh, they need, uh, especially because of the, uh, the lack of supplies uh, coming from uh, Ukraine and uh, Russia this year because of the war. Right. So you say their options in terms of how they could target Canada have been reduced. But from your perspective, what could retaliation look like? I mean, are we talking exclusively trade based retaliation or, or should we fear the possibility of more sort of arbitrary detentions like like we saw with uh, Mr. Spaver and Mr. Kovrig? I don't think so, because if you look at the uh, history of uh, hostage taking, they do that when, um, uh, for instance, uh, a country takes uh, someone uh, arrest someone on uh, spying uh, charges. This was the case of Su Bin back in 2014, and they arrested mm -hmm. uh, Kevin and Julia Garrett. Then, we, uh, as you know, we arrested uh, Mang Wang Zhou, and the two Michaels, unfortunately, were arrested. In this case, I think, uh, you know, in the past, they have banned canola, uh, and it's a bit ironic because uh, two days ago, they lifted all uh, existing uh, restrictions on uh, canola export. In the past, also, they have uh, uh, banned Canadian beef, Canadian pork. What they could do, uh, you know, uh, despite the fact that they have not imported uh, Canadian pork for about a year because they have now uh, surpluses in China, they, they could still issue a ban uh, and say that, uh, you know, they have found uh, ractopamine or something else. And officially, uh, you know, this would be a ban, but it's a ban that uh, would have no consequences because I don't expect that we will resume our exports to China for some time. But apart from that, there are other commodities. The other, uh, you know, if you look at minerals, on that side, we uh, Canada has benefited from the war between Australia and China. And uh, in the last two years, China has imported more coal, more iron from Canada than in the past uh, because they wanted to punish Australia. So unless they, they want to change their attitude towards Australia and then uh, the, the punish us, uh, that, could, that could be an area they, they could uh, uh, reduce their imports of, uh, of coal or uh, iron. But, uh, and, and there are other commodities that uh, they could look at to, uh, to send a signal that uh, they are not pleased uh, with uh, the decision taken by the federal government. Right. But, but as you say, with the economic slowdown there, they need some of those commodities to give the, some juice to the economy, particularly coal for energy and these sorts of things. But, but, but I wonder, sir, just bigger picture on, on the Canada-China relationship. I mean, it was just a week ago that the Foreign Affairs Minister, Melanie Jolie, said that she's focused on rebuilding Canada's damaged relationship with Beijing. Now we've got this decision. I, I mean, how would that impact an attempt to normalize relations with China? And is it even possible, <clears throat> given what's happened? 
Well, I think it's uh, it will be uh, very difficult. In fact, uh, when you look at the uh, at the last uh, six, uh, well, now eight months since the the two Michaels uh, were released, uh, there has not been much improvement. Uh, also, uh, we have no ambassador in Beijing. Dominic Martin left uh, Beijing at the end of December, so we it's uh, five months that we have been without uh, an ambassador. Uh, we don't know when one will be appointed. Uh, Mrs. Jolie is supposed to produce this uh, Indo-Pacific strategy, and you know that has been in the works. Uh, I would say for uh, it's getting close to two years. It's still no. Uh, evidence of when this will come out. And of course, a, a big portion of that uh, will uh, have to deal with, uh, with China. And I think, you know, uh, it's difficult to uh, engage in a dialogue with a country that refused to speak to you. Or uh, if, the, if uh, they say we'll have a dialogue, it, it will be uh, a, a diatribe to criticize Canada and say, stop to be the, uh, being the lackey of the United States. And I think, you know, we have learned a lot about China in the last few years, how it has become uh, a very aggressive uh, country, one that does not hesitate to take uh, bullying tactics like uh, uh, using hostage taking or using trade as a weapon. And, and I think uh, as a result, we have to have a, a much more targeted approach with China. We have to work with allies to counter the bad behavior of China. And that means, for instance, that we have to put teeth to this declaration uh, on uh, against uh, arbitrary uh, detention uh, that was uh, adopted by more than 60 countries in uh, uh, February of last year. Uh, and, and we have to look at other measures that we could uh, uh, work on to, to force China to be a uh, uh, a better international player. And, and on that, the, the message is uh, simple. Uh, uh, China, uh, you stop acting as a bully. You deliver on the commitments that you have made when you join WTO in terms of opening your market. Uh, you abide by the rules, by the uh, international of uh, international tribunals, like the one that was set under the uh, uh, UN uh, Law of the Sea uh, Convention. And then, you know, we will be happy to uh, to, to deal with you. But, uh, right. uh, you know, when you look at how she has been acting in the last few years, uh, I don't expect that they will want to make uh, any uh, consensus. And, and therefore, we have to brace ourselves for uh, difficult years uh, for, the, for the next few years. All right. I just want to squeeze in one more question, if I can, because the, the, the bilateral relationship is obviously very complicated. But in the current context of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, China is playing a problematic role in that. I mean, it's, it's a strategic partner with Russia. It's not a military partner with Russia, but it is amplifying Kremlin propaganda uh, at, at, during this conflict. So given all of that, I mean, should Canada reconsider its attempts to even normalize relations with Beijing while it's sort of acting as a, a bit of a comforter to, to Vladimir Putin? Well, you know, if we, uh, we had an ambassador in place, uh, he could try to, to reach out to Chinese and hopefully some of them would listen. But, you know, we could point out that uh, uh, if they want to uh, improve their image internationally, uh, they are in the best position to put pressure on Vladimir Putin to uh, declare a, a ceasefire uh, and to engage into real negotiations to put an end to, to the war. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, this war will continue. Right. Uh, it will have an impact on the Chinese economy, uh, the, and the economy is not doing well. Uh, we see that there are lots of grumblings inside the uh, Chinese Communist Party, which could have an impact on the chances of uh, she to be reelected. But, uh, uh, you know, it's always uh, better to try to have a dialogue. But again, as I said earlier, in the case of China, uh, they, uh, they are not uh, very much in a, in a mood to listen right now. Right. OK, Guy Saint-Jacques, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.